I should say also that I should say um, I should say also that um, John is very uh, has a very strong feeling of equity. You now that uh, invited my wife about a few few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, to give a lecture. And he thought that because of that, I should also have an uh, invitation. So anyway, whatever the reason, thank you very much, uh, John, for, for the invitation. So the topic is uh, Edric Fracture in Weak Rock. As you, as you can see, it's, a, it's maybe a, a topic which is not, maybe not very fashionable, because I think most of the work now is around uh, fracking of shales. But I, I hope that you'll find some interest into it. Uh, it's a project that has been initially sponsored by an energy company. It has been going for, on for several years. And I really need to acknowledge two individuals, you know, um, Yera Akobian and uh, Yui Gao, who really did a lot of the hard work uh, behind what I'm going to, to, uh, to, to show today, especially in, uh, on the numerical coding. Uh, Yera was involved in the early phase of the project when it was sponsored by, uh, uh, by this energy company. And then we, we find that the topic was so interesting that we continue and you uh, was a really a, a big help and uh, absolutely a pillar for this research. So, um, no, I need to, okay. So, I mean, to, for the audience today, I mean, I don't need to say that uh, fluid injection is uh, one of the key processes of earth resource engineering. And let me just go, uh, directly to, to, to the topic of interest, which is water flooding, and in particular, water flooding of uh, weak, poorly consolidated rock. And um, as you well know that uh, it's, a, it's a process of secondary oil recovery. It involves injecting water in, in boreholes uh, lar for large amount, I mean, uh, of the order of thousands of cubic meters per day over many months, even over many years. And the idea is, of course, to, to push the, to sweep the, 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 the oil from the injector to the producer. And it's, it's kind of obvious that in the sense that, you no, know, if hydric fracture are being initiated at the injector, um, at the injectors, it's going to improve the sweep efficiency. So now what is going to, what is being observed is that uh, even though those rocks, rocks are very weak, uh, that we have large injection pressure, large breakdown pressure. And uh, this, as I said, it's, uh, it's a bit surprising, it's counterintuitive. And the conventional explanation has been to invoke plasticity. Um, so, so that you know also that any um, field data is always ambiguous now because we can rarely do a, very rarely do a control experiment. But we can also do um, experiment in the lab, and those experiments were done by the Antarctic, very uh, sophisticated experiment that involved injecting water at the center of, of block of very weak sandstone and <clears throat> subjecting the rock at the same time to a triaxial seed of stress. No? And um, what we observe in those, in those tests, you know, that first of all, because of the such a high permeability, that, uh, so maybe let me first show the, the, the picture here at the, at the bottom left, you know, where we show that in dash blue, that is the injection rate. So the injection is increased by step. And you can see that uh, on the black line, black dashed line, which is the, the pressure in the injection, in the injection um, hole, that you see that the, bo the, the borehole pressure is, is following exactly the, um, the injection rate. So in a sense that what we observe is that because of the, of the very high permeability, we have directly we have steady state, okay? And what is being observed is that this breakdown is much larger than the, the, the one predicted by the classical Eimson ferrous criterion that you can see at the, at the bottom left. So if you look on, on the right, now you see that the breakdown, the, the wellbore pressure minus the, the imposed pressure at the boundary, at the external boundary, as a function of the injection rate, this has been translated from 3D to 2D because eventually I'm going to compare that to, to, uh, to, uh, to, a, to a model. And you see that the, the red line here be basically being the, what is being predicted according to the classical HF criterion. And you can see that it's way below the, the, the breakdown pressure that we, we observe in the lab. So the question is that, what is, what is the explanation behind those high inject, 
it break down pressure. So uh, what, the, as I said that uh, the, the conventional explanation has been plasticity and there's a lot of, by the way, I want to recognize the work of Panos Papanastasio in particular who has been uh, heading, uh, pushing the boundary along, along, this, uh, along this explanation. And the, what I'm going to, to, to discuss today is that maybe, maybe an alternative explanation uh, of wh what is behind those high, to, those high value of the Breedon pressure and invoking fracture mechanics and in a sense wondering whether or not you know, there could be a situation where we have stable crack propagation that uh, after the breakdown, after the initiation uh, of, the, of the fracture. So the, the, this may be the, key, may be the key slide with another one uh, of the presentation is that the, the contention, the, the basic hypothesis that I, I am putting forward is that we, we are facing a flow problem, not a strength problem. So in other words, that we have to look at the water flooding with the propagation of a crack as a, as a post-flow problem with the moving boundary, the moving boundary being the, um, the crack, of course, the evolving crack, and leading to an evolving fracture conductivity. And so the, the thesis that I'm going to pursue here is to say that the breakdown pressure is actually a, is a measure, marks the transition between two flow regimes, which I'm going to explain, a rock flow regime and a fracture flow regime, and has nothing to do with the, the initiation of, of the fracture, okay? And, um, and I'm going to use very classical concept of linear elastic fracture mechanics, but in the limiting case, by uh, uh, assuming that the, we can neglect the toughness. So in another not 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 word, the toughness is set to zero, okay? And so uh, just maybe a couple of words about how it differs from the usual explanation is that uh, which invokes the, the creation of, a, of a, the development, sorry, of a plastic region around the tip, no? Which of course leads, leads to a very large apparent toughness. But in that case, we would expect a blunt crack. And, and this is a bit in contradiction with experimental evidence, no? Where during the experiment, we, we do uh, this, some um, uh, CT scan done. And what we see is that basically the, uh, an airline crack, no? So that's, 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 that's the motivation in a sense behind this alternative explanation that I'm going to, to push forward. And the, the last thing I want to say is that a conventional model of, of hydraulic fracture are not applicable simply because of the leak off. Now, as you well know that the classical leak off is basically is scatters low and which is not applicable here because we are, because of injection of a large, long period of time, we are perturbing the pore pressure over a length scale, which are large compared to the, frac to the fracture length. And therefore we have to switch, we have to switch the model. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that, uh, why is that? Ah, uh, I want to say that a lot of the work on, on weak rock has actually been done, not on weak rocks, but on, on granular medium. And uh, you can see on the on on the on the right here, very actually very nice result that were published by Hain Rank at the at Georgia Tech, you no, know, where we show different pattern of crack-like uh, uh, objects, you no, know, as a function of the fluid viscosity and, and the ejection rate. So the contention that I have is that you no, know, a granular medium is not a very weak rock because Weak rock means that there is some cohesion, and if there is some cohesion, there is some softening, and if there is some softening, there is localization. So that uh, so the, we cannot look at the granular media as a limit of of a, of, a, of a weak rock. Okay, that's that's the the, the hypothesis that I'm, I'm putting forward. Okay, so um, let let me kind of contrast in the, in the simple setting of a KGD type model the difference between conventional hydric fracture and what I'm going to propose, no? So what you see on the, on the top here is, is the KGD where we're injecting, uh, there's no, uh, all, the, all the fluid being injected is going to the, the, the two wings of, of the fracture, 
the leak off is given by the Carter leak off, so it is a, a dependence on the inverse square root of the exposure time. And uh, we have the partitioning of the, the flux, the injection flux into storage, this term here, which is the DVC DT and, and, and leak off. And one um, parameters that characterize the, uh, that is the ef treatment efficiency, which is the, the, the storage volume, the, fluid, the, the, the crack volume divided by the total volume of fluid being injected. And so what, what I'm going to, to, to uh, uh, pursue here is another model where, first of all, the, the borehole is, uh, is modeled explicitly uh, because its flow initially, as you will see, there is flow from, from, the, from the borehole. And then the, the leak of actually is given, is, is linked to the, to the diffusion equation, which is solved in, in, in the domain outside. Okay? And one key parameters that I'm going to, to, uh, to compute, you know, which is an outcome of the, the analysis, is, is for a better word, just called the fluid fraction. And you can see that from, from, the, from the, the sketch here that the, the fluid fraction is simply the, the portion of the injected fluid that goes, that enters the inlet of the fraction. So in the, in the case of the conventional hydraulic fractures, then this parameter is going to be equal to one because there is no, no leaking, direct leaking from, 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 the, from the well bore. And the, the, this slide, uh, and that's the, the second important slide, I think, of the, of the, of the talk, is to, to show the, the, the key assumption that we have. So first of all, that we, it's, it's a, in a sense, a toy model. It's a, it's a plain, it's a plain model, KGD type, but it includes explicitly the well bore, no? This negligible toughness to the K1C is equal to zero. And importantly, this negligible, negligible storage. So the volume of the crack is very, very small compared to, to the, the volume of fluid being injected. And therefore it is being uh, neglected and actually should be neglected, especially if we do numerical modeling, because it would be so small, it would lead to uh, ill conditioning of the equation if you had to take that into account, okay? And uh, another uh, key assumption is that, uh, it's a limitation of, of the model that I'm going to present, but is that the, the fracture uh, propagates in a region of quasi-steady uh, pore pressures. So, you know that if you're injecting fluid at a constant rate, no, we have a, a diffusion length, which corresponds to a diffusion front, which is growing like the square root of time, uh, it, meaning that inside that region, we can approximate the flow by Laplace equation, but outside we need to, to look at, at the, the full diffusion equation. Okay. And so even though that it's in a sense kind of a bare bone model, it's still characterized by 10 parameters. No, most, a lot of them are being, um, are being um, material parameters. There's elasticity, there's diffusivity, permeability, fluid viscosity, but there's also the stress, the pore, the far, the far field stress, the far field pore pressure. It, in, in, we, we assume here that the far field stress is, is uh, isotropic, but just interpret sigma that as the minimum principal stress and that's uh, that all the, the things that I'm going to say Will, will hold. And we have also the borehole radius. So we have actually 10 parameters. And actually, it's, 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 so it's, it's a comprehensive set. But we can do scaling. And scaling is a very important step in, in the analysis. And by scaling, we can actually reduce that to um, space and time. So we, have, we find uh, we, we can identify a characteristic time to scale the time and the characteristic length no, uh, to scale the space. And those, those characteristic length and time are function of all the, the, those parameters. But we have also two additional parameters. One of them is a, is a dimensionless borehole radius. So it is A divided by this LK, the characteristic length. And we have the, the polaristic parameter eta, which you now enters, for example, the, the, uh, the emson ferrest uh, equation. Alpha is the famous biot coefficient and nu is a Poisson ratio. This eta is actually, the, the nice thing about this eta, it is in between zero and one half. But if you look at most rock, it is actually around 0 0.25, okay? 
because of this uh, combination of, of beard coefficient and, and, Poisson, and Poisson ratio. So um, the first, so what I'm going to present first is, is this, a bare bone model. That's where the, the model that uh, Yera Akobian was uh, contributed. And it's 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 the simplest one because uh, those two parameters that I that I mentioned are set to zero. So in other words, the Borel rate is set to zero, and there's no Borel elasticity. So it's it's really a, it's really a toy model, but it's to try to understand what is uh, the physics of of the model as as described. No. So now we have eight parameters. We can, as I said, we can reduce that to using scales. Um, you see here the LK, which is the, 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 the length scale of this problem. But you see also the time scale. It's a very unusual uh, form of time scale because usually when you have scales and do scaling analysis, you have monomials uh, of power law. It's a combination of, of uh, as you can see from, from the characteristic length, you can see that you see, for example, it depends on the, on the square of the of the permea of the mobility coefficient, okay, and so on. So you, you have you have monomials, and here we have something very strange, extremely unusual, which is uh, we have this exponential, and that is actually coming from from the diffusion equation, and in that gamma is simply the the um, the, the earlier coefficient zero point five seven something like that, and and the key parameter here is i. It's a dimensionless injection rate. No, you see that the, the, the mobility here and the difference between the far field stress and the power pressure. And this, we know that if you look at, at data, no, that water flooding is about of order one. Okay. But because of it is enters the argument of the exponential, it means that the, the, the time scale is very is a, depend in a very sensitive manner on the injection rate. And I, I will uh, argue a little bit about that later on saying that no, it means that it's an important finding that it is sensitive, but it means also that uh, any modeling is probably not very robust because in a sense, we have, we have a poor uh, definition of, we have poor knowledge of the parameters, which has, and that has a tremendous influence on the time, on the time scale. Okay, so when we do all of that, what we find that you, know, in, you see in the in the red circle, those are, are the scale scale aperture and pressure and length, you no, know? and psi and tau, te, psi and tau are, uh, psi is the, the variable along the along the wellbore uh, along the crack, sorry, and the time and tau in the scale time and those uh, so we can see there's no parameter, so we we we, we are left. By, by calculating, by, by looking at all the equation, boundary condition, we are left at calculating those, those function. And I, can, I, I will tell you already at this stage that uh, if you look at the length here, uh, we, what we find that for this bare bone model is that, and tells you also that it's the right scaling that actually lambda does not depend on time, it's furthermore it's equal to one. So, so actually the, for this model, the, we, we can prove that the crack length is increasing as, as a square root of time, okay? Okay, so, um, so that's a scale, a scaling analysis. No, um, I'm not going to dwell on, on the mathematical model, just to give you a hint how we solve it, no? Uh, first of all, we know the, the far field solution because it's given by the, the so-called uh, uh, taste, taste solution uh, if, you, if you are from, uh, the field of uh, groundwater mechanics, um, so it is this ex exponential integral. So it's well it's well known. The the, the governing equation in the domain are elastic. No, is a uh, sorry, it's a linear. I'm sorry, not a, it's, we have elasticity and diffusion. Those are linear operators, and the only nonlinearity comes from the flow in the crack. You know, the the cubic dependence of the conductivity on, on, on the crack aperture. Okay. So we take advantage of the fact that most of the problem is, is linear. So we use basically uh, green function. So displacement discontinuity or dislocation dipole and source solution that we are distributing along the crack. So that, that, that takes care of the solution outside the domain. So we are basically left, we actually very kind of nasty equation 
nonlinear equation uh, along along the along the crack, along the crack, and, and that's what we need to solve numerically using uh, by discretization by discretizing the, the equation. And I would just flash those, those this only slide with with the uh, with equation. So just to remind that we have at stake is the lubrication equation, the Reynolds equation, where we have the uh, this nonlinearity, we have the post flow media, where the, it's an integral equation, this, this, the distribution of source solution uh, along the crack, and then elasticity, this uh, distribution of dislocation dipoles with the propagation criterion, with the boundary condition, zero flux and zero, um, uh, zero opening at, at, the, uh, at the fracture tip. Okay, so that, that's, so it, it's a close, it's a close mathematical model, not simple to solve, but, uh, but can, it can be solved, okay? All right, so the first thing to do when, when we look at problem like that is to understand, okay, what is the solution at small time? What is the solution at large time? What we find that we have, um, we have actually two asymptotic you know, solution. And one is in a sense very well known, it is it's a radial flow. So that's what we find uh, even though, so what does that mean? It means that the fracture is as initiated propagates its conductivity so small in a, in a relative sense compared to the pose medium is that the crack is hydraulically invisible. It does not change the flow pattern, okay? And you can see that on the left here by those are contour level of, of the power pressure you see, uh, even though the crack is there and, and those, those, those cont, uh, level set have been calculated for this, this length, uh, particular length of crack, you know? Uh, it is. Um, it is. Uh, it doesn't affect. It does not affect the, the power pressure pattern. There's no leak off because there's only radial radial flow. And what we find that even though the toughness is set to zero, we find that the, the crack grows in a stable manner. In other words, know that you see, as you can see here, the injection pressure as a function of time. You see that we have the the logarithm of time, which is uh, betray again this, uh, this solution, the fact that we have a steady state solution around, a pseudo steady state solution around the well bore. So we have, even though the crack is propagating, we, we, the, the, the borehole pressure is, is increasing again as a log, log, log of time. Okay? Uh, I've said before that, so the, it, it evolves, the, the fracture length is strictly proportional to the square root of time. And then we reach another asymptotic uh, solution, which is the large time solution, where now all the flow is actually deviated from the well bore. So all the, the fluid being injected in the well bore enters the inlet of the fracture, okay? So there's no leak off anymore from, from the borehole boundary, okay? And then we see then, in a sense, we don't see the injection point anymore, it, it's, it's gone, no? Uh, the, we have linear flow, elliptic flow. I mean, that's it's, uh, not clear in the literature what, what language to use. It's linear flow in the sense that, you no, know, if you go, you can go perpendicular to the, to the flow line, a, uh, the, a perpendicular to, to the fracture in the neighborhood of the fracture. Um, and we have a so-called unstable crack, you know, in, in the following sense that the, the pressure is decreasing, you know, with the with time and the pressure decrease as a power law uh, minus one fourth uh, power law. Okay, so so as we go from one asymptotics to the other asymptotics, notice parameter phi, which is telling you how much of the fluid is going in uh, in the relative manner is going into the, the crack inlet. Well, initially, as I said, it's equal to zero because everything is flowing; it's leaking from the well bore. And eventually, at large time, it is going into uh, all all the the flux is going into the the fracture inlet. This parameter is equal to one. So, the, and that's parameter is actually an outcome of the uh, of 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 the uh, of the analysis. Okay, and we see diff very different patterns. So, those are the in the kind of scale form. Uh, the blue is the large time. The red is the short time. This is the opening. You no, know, uh, the large times is a bit more like like a Griffith crack because the the net pressure that you see on the right is not uniform, but um, is is nearly uniform. So it it reminds you of the Griffith crack, but you have a cusp like um, 
variation, you have a cusp at the, because you have a logarithmic singularity of, of the pressure uh, at early time because of uh, this, this, radial, this radial flow. And something that I will, I will also mention that in this uh, model, we don't have singularity of the pressure. Okay, the pressure is, is negative. No, the net pressure is negative, but uh, it is finite. Okay, so it is very different from uh, from from conventional uh, ad model of hydraulic fracture, where if we have no lack or the lack is very small, it is it is it has a sing singular behavior. The pressure will have a singular behavior. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, the the simple kind of bare bone model. We can enhance this. Uh, we can enhance it and. We enhance in, in two ways. So first of all, introducing explicitly the, the, the well bore, and then taking into account the, the back stress, no? Via this coefficient, uh, via this coefficient eta. So the solution now is, is of the form that depends on space and time, no? As before, but it you have two additional parameters: this alpha k borehole and the eta, the polarity coefficient. And we follow exactly the same type of approach. It's a slightly more co complicated because we need to take into, a, into account uh, the borehole. Fortunately, we have a solution for that and a very classical solution from Dundurs and Murat, which, for, which gives the solution for edge dislocation in the presence of, 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 a, of, a, of, a, of a hole. Of a hole. But we can also um, do the same thing. You know, we can also, by using an uh, image, uh, image uh, solution, we can also, uh, from, from the flow point of view, we can also take into account the presence of this well bore. So, so just think of that, that those um, source solutions are enhanced to account for, for the presence of, of the borehole. And we follow exactly the same, uh, pro, uh, the same procedure for solving it, uh, discretizing and solving eventually a nonlinear system of equation in terms of one of the variable, in this case, is the leak of along the, along the well bore. So the um, so what we can then do is is to look at that from from a particular angle to see that okay there are two outcomes in the sense of in this model one of is lambda it is the scale um, length of the fracture and phi it is it is fluid fraction so uh, think of that as the x axis is phi the y axis is lambda and so we can actually plot the solution the evolution of the solution in that in that in that space. So before that, remember that lambda was equal to one. So we were basically traveling along the upper edge of this phase diagram for going from I, that was the, the rock flow and going to F, that was the fracture flow at large time. Here, because we have the, bo the, the borehole, well, we, we have an early solution and that is that is what we call the E vertex, no? It is, and, and, and this, by the way, this, this uh, axis corresponds to phi equals zero. This is, if the solution is along that edge, it means that you have radial flow. So um, let me just so, uh, say a few more things with this diagram. The first one is that um, we have different colors that correspond to different value of the, the well bore radius. And the dashed line the pl and the, plane la the continuous line correspond to either eta equal to zero, so you have no polarity like in the, the first bare bone model, or you have the polarity which at the maximum level when eta is equal to, to 1.5, okay? So what you can see here is that uh, the solution starts here, it starts along the radial flow edge, no? You are, the borehole is, um, is there and the fracture propagates, eventually departs from that edge, no? And goes along this trajectory uh, towards at large time the, this fracture flow problem where we where we don't see the borehole anymore. Okay, uh, what you see here as the borehole radius becomes smaller and smaller, then we we the trajectory uh, keeps uh, still longer along the radial flow edge. You no, know? uh, and then eventually when alpha is very alpha k is very very small, well the solution follows those two those two edges. You no, know? and uh, again, the, uh, the 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 previous solution was was uh, was the particular case when we would go from simply along the KHD crack edge. Um, it's kind of a representation. It's to try to capture how the solution is evolving. 
And what you see, that's the last thing I want to say here, in that, in that space, those lines actually tells you where the peak pressure is taking place. So on the left of those lines, you know, and, and we have dashed and continues depending of the value of the, uh, the, the policy coefficient, but on the left, you no, know, the pressure would be increasing. On the right, the pressure would be decreasing. Okay. And here's a quick picture of maybe of the, of the solution for let's pick up one value of the borehole. Let's say 10 minus one. This is the a scale form of the injection pressure. So you see it increasing as a log, you no? Know? And then it reaches a peak and then it starts to decrease. And then you capture you know, the, this, uh, this uh, per low minus, minus one fourth per low, okay? Um, and here is the, the opening at, at the well bore. Again, so we have, we have asymptotic. If the, the borehole is very small, then we, we, we have what, we, what is called an intermediate time asymptotics where the, uh, where the, 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 the borehole aperture, the aperture of the crack at the borehole is increasing like a two to the one half. And then eventually it will go to, to this large time, long, large time asymptotic solution where the, the, the borehole, uh, the, crack, the crack aperture of the borehole increases as a t time to the one fourth, okay? And you see also here, how the length is increasing, the scale length. And you see here, how the fluid fraction is increasing from zero uh, to uh, to eventually to one, okay, and and of course time that is a scale time and the scale time the time scale I, I tell you is a very sensitive function of, of the injection rate, okay. All right, uh, let me pass that. This is just to to show that um, yeah we the, we retrieve the asymptotic solution uh, as when the, the this is the first model that I described by taking uh, looking at very small value of the rate of the of the of the borehole radius and and forgetting about the the, the policy coefficient no? to zero. okay and so this is uh, an example so I'm just looking at time yes i'm still good um looking at okay what is the practical implication of course we we, we are looking at that from the from a 2d point of view so so uh so we have to scale for example the injection rate by by the thickness of the reservoir so but those are a, a, a possible value, so those are not um, believable va value. Let me, let me put this way: they, they are inspired from by from a field test. Um, here you see the, the scale you know, that I've been calculated uh, on the base of the scaling analysis, and this is the result. You no, know? and what you see here for this particular set of parameters. Well, that the peak time uh, was reached after 45 days. No, look at the peak pressure, and you compare that to the to the sigma naught, which is 36 megapascal in this case. Well, you see that very high value of the peak pressure, eight eight megapascal. Uh, at the time of the peak, the efficiency is phi, so uh, parameters was equal to about one fourth. So that means that only one fourth of the flux was was entering the crack uh, immediately. And, and the injection rate, this dimensionless injection rate was about, was about one, okay? And again, I'm going, to, going back to this, to this comment that I made uh, early on to see that, well, this time scale is extremely, is, a, is very sensitive to this dimensionless injection rate, no? It is, again, is a formula. Uh, and what we find is that, you no, know, if you look at this formula and if you find that if, this um, parameter i is too small, it's much smaller, I mean, let's say one order less than one, for example, 0 0.1, then the time scale is so large that actually uh, you, you never observe the, the, the peak. No, it's, the pressure is always increasing. Uh, you, have all, you have always radial flow, basically. That, that's, that's what it means. And <clears throat> On the other hand, and that is in a, in a, in a, it's a restriction of the model because I made the, the assumption that the, the crack is propagating in the this quasi steady uh, region, then the, the, this dimensionless uh, injection rate must be smaller than that must be smaller than four. No, I mean it can be a bit large. It's, it's, it all depends how you what is uh, to what extent you approximate. Uh, 
what is the radius of the diffusion length? No, uh, do you say that is within 0.1 percent or 10 percent? But it means also that injection rate, which are let's say larger than let's say 510, uh, should be done by another model where we cannot make the assumption that we have this steady state region, that the crack is therefore propagating the region of the transient region. And therefore, that means that it has to be done numerically. No? The, one could do it in principle using the, the, same, the same formulation, but then we have to switch to not to Laplace source, but to the, the, the source solution of the diffusion equation. That means that we have to do a convolution in time, and that becomes so complicated that I think it is much better to lose uh, 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 domain numerical methods, like, like for example, finite, finite element. But that, that's an open, it's an open question. But at least, this provides maybe uh, a way to, 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 check, uh, to check the model if... Uh... Okay, so uh, I take uh, just a, a few minutes now to, um, uh, to, to look at, at no, a, a model of, of, the, of the laboratory experiment. Again, it's 2D. The, the big difference between what I've just presented and what I'm going to present uh, is that now the solution is time dependent, you no, know, because as I, when I, present the, the lab results. Now I say that no, the, it is so permeable that as soon as you increase injection rate, you stabilize, you stabilize the power, you stabilize the power pressure. Okay. So now we have, we, what we have to think that the loading parameter is actually the, the injection rate. So you increase the injection rate, you, you start, you initiate the fracture, it's stable. If you don't change the injection rate, the fracture does not grow, it is stable. You increase the injection rate, the fracture is going to increase uh, up to a point where the system becomes unstable, okay? And so the stability boundary is in terms of a critical uh, inject injection rate. And this, uh, this model has been uh, published in GMPS uh, about one year ago. So the, um, we, we use the same, same type of um, methodology, no? dislocation dipole or displacement discontinuity and source solution we it's a bit more involved because we know we have not the finite boundary so we have to apply the boundary condition on the boundary but basically it is the the, the same the same general method methodology okay and <laughs> here's maybe the kind of interesting picture here so uh, i should say that for the model what we do uh, we we assume a certain length and calculate what is the injection rate that gives you uh, uh, that that corresponds to the particular uh, fraction length, and in in this the, in, in the case of this model, the, tough, the toughness was not set equal to zero. It could be set to zero, but uh, it uh, so it, the so the, the idea was to calculate the injection rate so that the stress intensity factor was equal to the prescribed toughness. Okay? The, the result I'm showing right here, uh, the, the toughness was set to zero. And we have also here this dimensionless borehole radius, which is the radius of the borehole divided in this case um, by, yeah, I don't remember no, by what, by <laughs> what it is uh, being scaled, the radius of, no, I think it's still a length scale here. Anyway, so we have, it's a particular value of, of the borehole, but that comes, from the experiment, okay, and so um, so what you see here are different pictures. So of the again of the power pressure field for different value of the fracture length. If fraction length is equal to one, if land is equal to one, that means that the crack has reached the boundary of of the of the sample, okay. And so you can see that initially, when the fraction length is small, again we see we retrieve what we found before. That we see this, this uh, rock flow pattern, so the radial flow, uh, the power pressure field is not affected by, by the presence of this crack, you know. And as the, it propagates, you see more and more variation of that. And eventually, you see that when it reaches the, the boundary, in this case, no, then you find that you have this kind of elliptical, not kind of pattern, no. And here is a kind of animation. So, what, what you see here, Let's assume that now the injection rate is, is increasing continuously, no, not, not by step, but continuously. And so what you see here is the, the, bo the borehole pressure as a function of the injection rate. You see that it reached a peak here, 
And in the movie here, the animation, you see all the pore pressure is evolving along the, the along this um, uh, as the evolution associated with the extension of, of, the, of the fracture length. Okay. All right. So that's um, that was a, a, few, a few more results. Let me just just uh, show, for example, this one here, which links depending on the value of the of the the, the elastic parameter. Now we have different curve, and this is the injection rate versus the crack length. Everything's dimensionless. Uh, it's for a particular set of parameter. In this case, the toughness was equal to zero, and we have we have certain uh, stress deviator applied at at the boundary, so that therefore that we had um, yeah it should be a small edge here. So we have uh, the, the maximum stress was not the same as the minimum principal stress, but you see here as this kind of monotonic increase of the the injection rate versus uh, versus the crack length. Okay, again here you see uh, the, the fluid fraction as a function of the crack length. Now starting from when from zero, so again we have a radial flow here, and as the crack length is increasing, the aperture is increasing, and therefore more flow is de is, is deviated towards uh, towards the uh, the crack. No, and uh, here are the, the the borehole pressure versus the injection rate, and you see that this uh, it starts at initiation. Uh, here it's negative because you know, we have a, we have a, 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 an applied deviatoric stress, no, uh, and in this particular scaling it means that uh, the inject the injection pressure would be negative. But the starting point corresponds to the Emerson Ferrer's uh, criterion, and then you can see that we are still increasing the pressure, is still increasing until it reaches a peak, and then it starts to deviate from that and start to drop. Okay. Um, Yes, uh, yeah, maybe maybe those are results for, for two different crack lengths, no? And let me just maybe just uh, look at this particular result. This is gamma, this is a scale leak off, and you can see that at the crack, near the crack tip, no? The leak off goes to zero. We, can, we know actually what, are the, the, what form of asymptotics it is, and that is very different. I want to stress that it's very different from the, from the Conventional fracture and Carter leak off where we have singularity here because we have the, we have the Laplace equation uh, governing the power pressure in the domain in in the sample and the fact that we have continuity of the power pressure and the fluid pressure of the crack it means that we cannot have singularities okay and so we can see that the very uh, the, the the leak off actually goes to zero at at, at the tip of of the of the crack okay. And, uh, and finally, um, here is an interpretation of experiment. Of course, uh, our model is 2D, so we have to make some assumption. But um, here's an attempt, at least, to, 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 to the, data, the data here correspond to, to, to the experiment. No? They have been reduced no? um, so that to transform them into 2D. So the, the, the the length of the, the the open hole was was used to to scale, not to reduce that to a to a two D model. But you see that okay, in, in this case we we kind of match in a sense we can we are able to match the the, the results, the experimental result by in this particular case by taking uh, eta close to what, zero point five. No, I think that whether or not that's that's the correct interpretation, but at least it shows that the the model. Is very consistent uh, in at least in a qualitative for, form. Is very consistent with the experimental results. No, uh, and again, telling you that that uh, that in a sense that what is behind this the, the whole this whole model this uh, this alternative way of looking at the problem is that the and uh, that the peak pressure that we observe no has nothing to do with the, the breakdown of the formation. It's, it's, a, it's, it's marking the, a transition between two flow patterns. You know? And, and the, flow pat the change of flow pattern is linked to the fact that we have a moving boundary, a crack, and some nonlinearity, which is associated with the dependence of the, the crack 
conductivity to the aperture, the aperture being controlled also by function of the crack length. Okay. And the, the, the final point that, again, I want to repeat is that maybe it's probably the, the most value of this, of this, this model the, is this extreme sensitivity of the time to peak uh, due, to, uh, due to this dimensionless injection rate. So that the fact that we, that we, it's unlikely that we can make a robust prediction of the time to peak. Um, and because of this exponential dependence of the time scale on the injection rate. Okay, and so in terms of expansion, so again, I want to stress again, it's a very simple model. No, uh, it ignores something very important in water flooding, which is for plugging by impurities um, that we can show that at the addition time scale, I didn't mention that the, the, the first model was characterized by one time scale. The second model was characterized by two time scale. And now if we want to take into account the power plugging, we need to add an additional time scale. So because this, uh, and if we need to take into account the reservoir thickness, we have another time scale. So that, that model would be then characterized by four time scales. And, and this is not for the find out. This is not an easy problem to solve. Thank you very much for, uh, for uh, attending this. And I'd be happy to, to, to try to respond to any question that you have. Well, Emmanuel, thank you. I mean, as always, very provocative um, presentation, and and it really got me thinking. And it, it's I know it's got other people thinking, including Alexei Savitsky. Um, he has a question, and uh, Alexei, do you want to just ask the question? Can you unmute and ask? Well, maybe not. Maybe not, but but uh, 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 Emmanuel, I don't know whether you can see the chat or not. But uh, yes, but, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, so so let me read it. Um, I have a question about the Carter leakoff. Can it be justified in the case of high permeability when the power pressure per is perturbed through the length of the fracture through the matrix flow and through the leakoff without any effective filter cake? No. Um, no, it cannot be justified. Uh, ah, yes. <laughs> Alexi is attending from the Frankfurt airport. No, thank oh. you. <laughs> thank you, Alexi. This is very dedicated. That's a dedication. Uh, no, I mean, that, that's the whole point. No, we cannot, we cannot justify. We can interpret Carter's leak off, no? In the case of when we have, we're injecting uh, water, so there's no filter cake, we can interpret as a, as a short time solution. Early time solution because you have this inverse of square root of time. So at the, the the small time solution of the diffusion equation is is actually very consistent with Carter's Dikov. No, we have to replace the the Carter coefficient by something else. No, but um, but we cannot we cannot uh, justify it for um, for in, in general. No. And so what, in a sense, what I've taken, I've taken the, the, the opposite, you no, know, I've taken the opposite idea to say that, okay, no, we are, we are actually in steady state. Uh, there's another uh, question, is that, yes, okay. So that's, this, it's a very interesting question, Shenko. Um, yes, uh, indeed, no, this is, I give the impression that, that it is uh, open hole, but, if, if you think about it, and if you, uh, so yeah, the question is that yes, the, the, the bore is case and perforated and, and we still use this radial flow in a sense. Well, the fact that it, even if you have, um, if you have case and, and, and you have the inlet and you have perforation, what's going to happen is that you are going to, at a small distance away from the well bore, you are still going to have radial flow. No, it's going to be a bit more complicated in the in the in the in the neighborhood, but you are still going to, to, to have radial flow. So that is not going to invalidate. Actually, in the in the in the very simple the bare bone model that I introduced, there's no there's no, not even a well bore. Actually, it is mimicked by some kind of uh, the way the injection uh, the fluid is entering the fracture, it is mimicked automatically by some kind of negative leak off. So so this, the diffusion equation is very um, uh, how could I put that? Is um, 
the diffusion equation will accept that though it, it will regularize things. Uh, and so that at some distance away from the well, but even though you have complication, you are going to have radial flow. Uh, there is another question here um, uh, from Thomas Joe. Uh, question one, as for HF breakdown pressure, do you mean it is calculated by Kirsch solution? Yes. And taking into account uh, the, the fact that we have thoracic stress concentration, and that is, that is a classical paper from uh, Amson and Ferris, 1967. Um, and Q2, if it is, yes, I think the geometry of the system is different. Kirch equation is circle. Yes, but, but the, 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 the Emson Ferrer's equation does not account for the presence of the crack. No, it, it, it looks at, at the well bore and asks the question, is the, the effective hoop stress at the well bore equal to the tensile strength? That's, that's, that's what it does, no. Uh, and so, so, so this in a sense, uh, the way we do it, you no, know, we, because we assume that the tough is equal to zero, we don't have to assume, but I mean, uh, at the end, it is, it is effectively equal to zero. Then we can calculate what, knowing the toughness, we can calculate what is the tensile strength, well, the toughness equal to zero, the tensile strength equal to zero. And then uh, that is the starting point of our calculation. Mm -hmm. Um, so Alexi, um, uh, um, I've uh, says that I've been strongly suspecting that even the breakdown in hard low permeability rocks has more to do with the flow regime change than with the rock strength and tip processes. Um, yeah, it's not a question, it's a comment. So I'm, I'm really pleased and intrigued to see another ex example such an explanation for the breakdown. I think that maybe if I can comment, I think that the, the strongest um, support for this model comes from the experiment. Actually, I should have said that done from Teratech. I mean, John was, as I think, instrumental in, in uh, John McLennan was instrumental in overseeing the, 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 the project uh, to the very, uh, hard experiment to do. I mean, you can imagine to do a test you now with an extremely weak rock. But I mean, those experiments are, are clear cut. You no, know? they, I mean, it's a control experiment, control stress. Not, uh, pore pressure was a bit complicated, but, but at least it's measured at the, at the outside boundary because it's so much flow that there is some resistance and the pore pressure the, 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 the impose the power pressure at the outside boundary was actually a function of the, of the flux, the ejection rate, but that, that can be accounted for it because the, the point is that because it is steady state, now we can exactly calculate uh, that. And so the, the experiment are very clear cut. I mean, the, the break on pressure, the, the peak pressure, I should not use a break on pressure. The peak pressure was way above the, 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 the breakdown pressure and kind of consistent with the model that we propose, but no, uh, it's, it's still a model uh, and it can be, um, yeah, it can be contradicted, I'm sure. <clears throat> and, and I think, Emmanuel, you and, and one of your students at, at the ARMA meeting published on some of some the work that you did in Hard Rocks. So, yes. So Uh, I think that's, uh, Shenko has another comment. Um, uh, let me read that for the rock flow asymptotic solution with no leak off and radial flow only, what is the physics driving the stable crack growth? Well, there is still, um, okay, <laughs> it's another interesting question. Uh, yes, I mean, we look at the, we look at the flow pattern, of course, it, 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 it's radial flow, but it's not exactly radial flow near the crack. So th there's enough net pressure on, on the crack face to cause the crack to, to propagate, but it is stable. Uh, that you can prove, no? It's actually very easy to prove that what you can, you can do, you take the, 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 the pressure solution from the diffusion equation, the, 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 the log 
and you plug that into the, and you assume a Griffith crack, and you look at, at the stress density factor, and you can see it's negative. So that no, you need so you can you can you can see that uh, you can prove that that indeed uh, it is stable. <clears throat> and he, again, I stress the fact stable even if the toughness equal to zero. That, that's the point. So it's it's, it's conservative. Alexi asked the important question: uh, Do you see a way of calibrating the sensitive model parameter through the field test? Yeah, I, I think that um, if if one one can do control field test, then I think that we can back calculate the parameters and the fact. So actually, we we we, we take the the other way around. The fact that it is very sensitive means that we cannot predict, but it means also that if we are measuring, we can actually determine the parameter because because it is sensitive. We can do a very good job at, at estimating the, the, the parameters. So it is, it's reversing the flow of information. No? Um, Emmanuel, I don't see any other questions, and it, and it is uh, 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 approaching the hour. Oh, all right, we got one more. Let's see. So, so Martin is interested. So, do I get it right that the hydrofrac is generated at much lower breakdown pressure, i.e., during pressure buildup? No, no. The, the, I mean, there's no conflict with the the classical interpretation as far initiation is concerned. But the difference in this model and and for example the classical interpretation in hard rock, very low permeability. That if you have very low permeability, when you start to initiate, you can show that it is unstable because of the stress concentration around the crack. So we have we have breakdown, and breakdown means that you no, know, what you the way you have to interpret is that you no, know, the demand for the fluid which is associated with the crack propagation exceeds the the supply of fluid, and that is the reason uh, that you, you get a, a drop of pressure uh, when the fracture initiate. And the fracture initiation is followed by unstable crack propagation. So we, we have no conflict with that. The our initiation pressure is exactly the same, is given by, by Emson. The only difference is that the pressure is increasing after that. It is not decreasing. And it is increasing because the crack propagation is stable. That's, that's the, the whole point. Alexei has one more comment before he has to catch his plane. Um, uh, his comment is that hydraulic fractures are always initiated at the pressures well below the breakdown pressure. Even, even the, I, I'm sure that he knows more than, than that than I do, but even when you take into account the, uh, the Hampson Ferris correction, because I mean, this all this thing about, um, yeah, which which break down which break down the equation one is using, you know. Well, I I think on, on that note, I I I'd really like to thank uh, um, Dr. Detourney again. Um, very um, insightful presentation that's gotten me thinking a lot. Um, and and as always, it 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 combines experimental, analytical, and and numerical uh, aspects. So so Emmanuel, thank you so much. It was it was absolutely fantastic. Thank you, John. Thank you again for inviting me for this talk. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye-bye. <clears throat>